Good morning. It is Wednesday, January 11th, 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Just going to run through the morning charts real quick and kind of recap on what took place yesterday and what's unfolded overnight tonight and what we're looking for going ahead a few days. Looking at the U.S. dollar index, this is the four-hour chart. You can see it's been on a nice upward trend, and as they say, the trend is your friend, and there's there's a higher possibility that the trend will continue even after a pullback than it than there is for it to reverse to the downside. So what we saw yesterday, if we just zoom in, more or less the past couple days we've seen the US dollar index pull back. Nice pulled back, a nice controlled pullback into a previous pivot top here. And in overnight trading, we've seen the US dollar start to move up. This has put a little bit of pressure on crude oil and it's put some pressure on equities this morning. Both gold and silver are still holding up near their highs, but uh, overall they don't really have any real volume behind them. But overall, the U.S. dollar is putting in a nice bounce here, and we'll see how that is going to continue throughout the session. Now, if we just take a look at crude oil, of course a strengthening dollar typically means lower commodity prices. And we can see here, if we just zoom in a little bit, on overnight trading we've seen the crude oil prices pull back down. Yesterday morning I pointed out we had this uh, kind of little mini parabolic kind of curve where it went straight up and it went right into a resistance zone and I pointed out usually those those moves are given back and that's what we've seen today we've got that pullback in crude oil sitting more or less in a support zone from these this previous high and of course through this previous congestion right here before it had a little bit of a reverse back up now we didn't see any real big volume we actually saw some selling volume as it uh, worked its way up to resistance and of course it's come back down. I don't really see any setup in crude oil. If we just zoom out a little bit more of this four hour chart, you can kind of see where we stand. Overall, crude oil's holding up in a uh, key support level here, still in a support trend line, but overall it's it's bouncing up at, an, at a resistance zone. And at any time, I think if we see the US dollar explode to the upside and we see some uh, poor earnings numbers come out or some issues more issues in, overseas we very likely to see crude oil start to fall down once it breaks the support trend line it's going to have a lot of stops set at this pivot low there'll be stops set at this pivot low another pivot low back here so there is a good chance uh, once crude oil starts to fall we could see it more or less come down and ping pong around to these levels and uh, actually have a, a pretty um, good size pullback. Now taking a look at gold and silver, of course the dollar this morning has moved up uh, nicely. It's put a little bit of downward pressure on gold. You can just see the last uh, four hours it's pulled back this morning with the US dollar having a bit of a bounce. Overall it's it just pierced resistance yesterday. If we just pull this chart up, uh, this previous pivot high you can see it just pierced that level a little bit yesterday. You can see there was really no volume on that pierce. That's usually a sign of a little bit of a fake out or a shake out where it just uh, a lot of people have their stops set there. It'll go just above it, shake them out, and then you can see it reverse. So we'll see how gold starts to play out here. If, it, if we start to see some strong, strong move to the downside, if it can break below this little pivot low here. And then we see some type of bear flag more or less form. It might be a shorting opportunity. Uh, to go to the downside although I don't really want to short gold or silver simply because they are a safe haven and there's still a lot of issues out there but if we see the US dollar take off we could see uh, a little bit more pressure on gold and silver now that they're trading up at this resistance level it's likely to see some selling come in here looking at the silver chart this is a four hour chart of silver also you can see if we just uh, zoom in a little bit more Yesterday, we came up to a previous pivot high. We just pierced it by a couple cents. And uh, there's, there was a little bit of volume pushing up, but overall came up, touched it, and we're starting to see it move down. There was, there was a little bit of volume behind it, but not uh, anything significant. Again, both our gold, silver, and crude oil, they all did the same thing yesterday morning, which I pointed out in the video. They kind of had this little bit of a reversal, and they both went parabolic on the short term time frame here straight up into a resistance zone and I pointed out generally when they go straight up like that usually they're going to have some type of pause or pull back after that they usually don't just break through a level they might pierce it but they'll usually pull back so 
with any luck we'll maybe see silver pull back and uh, form some type of bullish uh, price action both gold and silver and we, you never know we could see them head higher right now the markets are at a tipping point really it's a kind of a 50 50 bet where everything is going to go so I'm just kind of waiting to see what unfolds uh, Friday we've got uh, some news coming out that uh, could drastically change the market and um, if we don't get any QE3 announced on Friday then we'll probably see the US dollar take off to the upside probably see gold silver and oil pull back and uh, we'll probably see equities obviously pull back also with a strong rising dollar so it's kind of where we stand and it's almost as though people are buying into the rumor for Friday um, into equities and to into uh, commodities because usually you buy the rumor and then you sell the news so most likely there isn't going to be QE3 announced and then it'll get uh, we'll see the market get sold off in the US dollar rally on Friday so that's kind of what I'm looking for there now taking a look at the SP 500 just want to show uh, just the daily chart here's the SPY ETF regular trading hours a couple different things I want to kind of point out overall we've got this strong we've got a couple strong support trend lines here we've got this trend line we've also got a, a previous pivot low a very steep one going up here more or less it's a, a rising wedge we're up into a resistance zone and volume isn't anything spectacular we're not seeing an explosive move to the upside it'd be nice if we saw uh, a nice steady stream of volume like we saw back here but really we've got uh, very light volume and the fact that it's kind of a rising wedge is usually a sign that we're going to see prices break down and we've also had a couple big gap windows here where the prices have gapped up and just traded sideways generally those big gaps tend to get filled so I wouldn't be surprised if we see um, a sharp pullback maybe on Friday or possibly even uh, anytime now between now and Friday but overall there's going to be some pretty key levels the support trend line is very steep meaning there's going to be a lot of pivot lows there's going to be a, uh, a lot of stops placed underneath yesterday's low there's going to be one placed at the bottom of the gap window at the top of this gap window at the bottom of this gap window of course of this pivot low so there's a lot of levels where p the prices have have gone up very quickly and a lot of people will keep ratcheting up their stops who are long and so any of the, once these price levels are, are breached these stops are going to get triggered and what it causes is for a, f a very sharp decline and that to me feels like we're somewhere I pointed this out last week we're somewhere in this vicinity where we're starting to get we've had two big gaps you can see back here when you get toppy you start to get gaps very volatile price action and when you get a move that is very strong moving up like this eventually once you break that uh, you start to run the stops you can see we went more or less in two days from way up here around twenty twenty nine dollars all the way down to one twenty two about which is a huge percentage drop in only two days and it all happened more or less just the market gapping down eventually the market came right back up to fill all these gaps but that's kind of where we stand right now is the market is overbought overstretched and um, at any time we could see the market just kind of plummet and kind of reset itself so we got to be very cautious there now the market is at a pretty major tipping point we are at a level where we could see something like this start to unfold uh, let me just grab a different tool here where we could see a decline like this actually really start to waterfall off on the equities market or where something back like what we saw here December to March where we see the market put in a very strong never-ending kind of rally that just grinds higher without any significant really pullbacks and that's kind of where where we kind of stand right now it feels as though we're we're somewhere on the edge of a sharp pullback or we're somewhere like this here we've already had a nice move and we've seen pauses and we've got a couple gaps and um, a lot of people are becoming a little more bearish on the market where we are now I mean we could end up seeing a pretty strong move up now you can see these sharp pullbacks here if I was to just zoom in a little bit more on this chart you can see there's a pretty sharp pullback a couple of them this is what I'm anticipating is probably going to happen very soon we're going to see a sharp 
pullback most likely it will probably get bought and we could see a, a strong continued move higher and this is what I mean once once we get a pullback we might be looking to take a, a long position and um, and ride the trend right now the trend is up for the equities market on the uh, on the daily chart so dips should be looked to be bought right now and uh, I'm gonna keep my eyes on it but you can see here once you get a runaway market when uh, really you don't get any pullbacks the market just inches its way higher for an extended period of time you can see it did it for a couple months here they're uh, they're relatively tough to trade eventually you just have to jump in after you get a big move to the upside eventually you have to just kinda of bite the bullet and get into a position and ride the trend because a lot of times these runaway markets they they just run away without you more or less which is why they're called runaway markets they don't have any real kind of proper pullbacks down to say a 20 period moving average or anything like that so that's kinda of what's unfolding there now taking a look at the futures chart for the S&P 500 this morning here is uh, the last two trading sessions again this is a futures chart so it's 24 hour trading the high volume sections here these are regular trading hours that everybody sees from 9.30 to 4 Eastern Time. That's regular trading hours. That's when the majority of volume is traded. So yesterday you can see we had a um, little dip in the morning, strong surge up, and then eventually it sold down into lunch, had a little bit of a bear flag, and sold down into the close again. More or less we had a, the market closed back here on the previous day. It gapped up here, and I pointed out, there's a good chance we'll probably see the market start to fade back down and in overnight trading it did continue to pull back eventually picked up a little momentum didn't really clear any previous pivot high and then we saw the US dollar take off this morning and it's put some pressure back on equity so we're seeing overall the S&P is going to gap a little bit lower at this point in the morning uh, by the time 930 comes around it could be opening flat we'll see how that goes but overall the market is uh, now going to be pulling back into a more or less a little bit of a support zone it needs to come back a little bit more and we'll see how the market plays out going into uh, 930 945 time zone taking a look at the market sentiment real quick this is the barchart.com website and I like to look at a couple things on this page if we just look down here on the NYSE advanced decline line we've got advancing declining shares you can see more or less we had a ratio of about uh, uh, four to one so there's four buyers to every one seller out there we're seeing new highs really take off they haven't really taken off huge we'd like to see this on the 200 300 zone both of these new highs but overall the new lows are pretty much bouncing bottom and we're starting to see new highs start to stretch up so the market is is looking a little more bullish but overall if everybody was buying yesterday generally there's going to be some profit taking and that's what we've been seeing in overnight trading and that profit taking has been pulling the market down in overnight trading now another chart I like to look at is this momentum chart if I just pull that up I like to consider the momentum chart anything over 101 I consider to be an overbought market this is very short term this is uh, uh, just a, a quick momentum usually if the, the day closes very strong to the upside and we see this uh, this indicator more or less above the 101 you can usually anticipate uh, selling in overnight trading at a gap lower or selling the next morning uh, the next trading session uh, anyways looking here at 99 I consider anything below 99 to be oversold so if we see the market stretch below this level uh, usually we can anticipate some buying in overnight trading or the next session we'll see some uh, a bounce in the market so you can see we're not far out of the out of the uh, in the overbought territory but we are overbought yesterday it was a big gap up if uh, the market held up through the re into the close we would have had this a lot higher but overall the market pulled back through the session so this indicator more or less is still trading showing us overbought and uh, we are getting that sell off through overnight trading another chart I like to look at is the stocks trading above the 20 day moving average this is a pretty pretty good intermediate indicator I consider anything over 75 to be an overbought market. You have to be very cautious adding to your longs. You should be tightening your stops because the market can reverse for a multi-week uh, uh, reversal more or less. And anything below the, um, usually the 20 to 20 or 15 to 20 level, 
I consider to be oversold. And when prices get down at these levels, you shouldn't be looking to short. You should be looking to tighten your, your protective stops and, uh, and get ready for a strong reversal to the upside. Now this chart here shows how the prices have advanced. You can see we've got a pretty strong trend line up and we're just starting to break above some previous highs here. So we'll see if we do get another up session or so, but overall the market is overbought and it's showing that we could have a uh, one or two week or possibly even longer pullback uh, in the market here at any time. So we've got to be very cautious with what's kind of unfolding. Now that being said, this is uh, just a short term kind of indicator and you got to be cautious because in a runaway market you can see the market just continue to uh, expand and it'll trade up in this area for quite some time and the market will just continue to keep moving up and up and up. So you got to be a little bit cautious on that but just knowing that the market's overbought you don't want to be adding long large positions when the market's at a point where it could sharply reverse to the downside. Anyways, that's it for this morning, and I'll talk to you in a little bit. Bye-bye.